I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and uh, I have been enjoying so far our study in the book of Thessalonians. I've been enjoying preparing for it. And uh, as we go through the book of 1 Thessalonians, you'll remember that I have told you, and you can see it through study, that each chapter in the book of 1 Thessalonians talks about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and a little different aspect of it in our lives. And as we come into chapter 3, we see there that the second coming of Christ is a purifying hope. And uh, 1 John 3, verses 1, 2, and 3 talk about that as well, that when we understand that the Lord Jesus Christ could come back at any moment, that it is and it ought to be a purifying hope in the life of the child of God. So as we looked at the first part of 1 Thessalonians 3 here, um, we have seen the simple truth that this Thessalonian church was standing fast in the Lord, that Paul commends them for that. In verses 1 through 5, as we studied those verses, we saw the concern that Paul had for the Thessalonian church and how he had sent Timotheus to them uh, to help them in the Lord and to hear of how they were doing. And then as we come into verses 6 through 8, which we are looking at today, we find here Paul's consolation. So let's read those verses and then we will look at them today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and in verse 6, it says, But now, when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord." So we see as Timothy goes, he observes the church at Thessalonica, the believers there, and then as he comes back to Paul, in verse 6 there, we see that Timothy brings a good report with him back to Paul regarding these saints in Thessalonica. He brought back good tidings of their faith. Notice what it says in verse 6, But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith. Paul was concerned because he knew there was some persecution in the area and Timothy comes back and he is able to encourage Paul by telling the, him that the church of Thessalonica, the people that make up that church, were not buckling uh, under the persecution, nor were they giving in the temptation to be silent about Christ, but even in the face of adversity that they were witnesses um, for Christ. And you know, friends, that ought to be the way it is. Uh, right now in North America, it is pretty easy to be a Christian. It's pretty easy to live for God. But friends, even when things get tough, even when things get difficult, even when affliction arises and persecution arises, that should not silence our voice as the people of God. We ought to continue to rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and to be sharing that hope with others. These Thessalonian believers were not forsaking their worship of Christ. Um, you know, sometimes I stop and think about, you know, if it came to the place in our country that it was no longer legal to go to church, I wonder how many people would stop going to church. Oh, friends, we ought not to forsake our worship of the Lord Jesus. In practical terms, these believers were continuing to study the scriptures. They were continuing to pray and continuing to worship together, even though things were difficult in that area. As I thought about this whole idea of perseverance in the face of persecution and studying the scriptures and prayer and worshiping, I was reminded of some verses. First of all, in 1 Timothy 1 and in verse 19, it says, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having err concerning faith have made shipwreck. So there Paul encouraged Timothy to hold to the faith and he, rem and, uh, and he reminded them that there were some who were not doing that, that there were some who had made shipwreck of their faith, and it ought to be our desire and our goal that that would not be true of us. In Hebrews chapter 11 and in verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him not just seeking him casually but those who seek him diligently and then in first john chapter 5 verses 4 and 5 it says this it says for what for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith 
Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So the true believer is not overcome by the world. They are overcomers of the world. And it is through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he heard of the good tidings of their faith, but also he heard of the good tidings of their charity back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and in verse 6. But now when Timotheus came unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, the believers were standing fast in their love. You say, what love? Their love for Christ, their love for each other as believers, and their love for fellow man. Remember the Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 30 through 39, the greatest of all the commandments is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like unto it, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So love is the earmark of the people of God. It is that which shows uh, the people around us that we are true born-again Christians. They see our faith through not only the stand that we have for the truth, but by the love that we have for one another. John 13, verses 34 and 35, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. So we see there that it is the love that we have for one another that shows people that we are the true disciples of Jesus Christ. When somebody looks at you, can they tell that you are a disciple of Christ, that you are a follower of Christ because of the love that you have for the Lord Jesus Christ, the love that you have toward the brethren, and the love that you have toward people that need the Savior. John 15, 12 says, This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. So we see there that Jesus once again is reminding them of the importance of loving one another. Jesus knows how quickly we are to forget. And uh, as a result of that, many times in the, in the scriptures, we are told that which is important. And one of those things that we are told over and over again is the importance of love toward one another. And that that love be real, that that love be genuine, just not put on. Not that we put the appearance of loving somebody when we're around them, but then showing that we don't when we're not around them and talking behind their back. Friends, that's not love. Romans 12 verse 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. In other words, let love be without hypocrisy. Do not be hypocritical in your love. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. So coming back to 1, Timothy, or 1 Thessalonians 3, and in verse 6, he says, But now when Timotheus came, unto you, or un, came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. So not only was there love there, and not only was there uh, faith there, but also there was a, a good report. They had a good memory of Paul. They longed to see Paul in the same way that Paul longed to see them. It was good tidings that their memories of Paul caused them to desire to see him again. And, you know, as I thought about that, you know, we've been a while now in this whole coronavirus thing. And, and I think about some of those churches that I minister in. And the desire that I have to see those people once again. And I can certainly identify with what Paul is saying here in this passage. But friends, what a strong testimony of their faith. That it was not a weak faith. That it was a faith that was strong and genuine. The kind of faith that every believer should desire to have. And the kind of faith that every church should desire to have. So I ask you today as we finish our study on verse 6 of First Thessalonians 3. Do you have that kind of a faith? Would people be able to say as they look at your life that they rejoice at the report of the faith and the charity that you have, not only toward um, God, but toward the brethren and toward the people that need the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, friends, what a wonderful testimony. And may we desire that that would be our testimonies, not only in our individual lives, but also in our churches. And the only way we can have that kind of a testimony as a church is if the people that make up that church have that kind of a testimony and have that kind of a desire and faith and love 
in their life. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.